I'll tell you what you do. Take your Bible. I've got something on my mind right now, and I just want to go over this. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, if you would. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, I'm going to show you something God has helped me with uh, over the years. Uh, I've talked in time. I did not plan on doing this tonight. I've got some things up on the screen we're going to talk about. Uh, the children of Israel in the wilderness and the things they did and so on. But I just feel led to kind of talk about this right now. Several years ago, um, God began to deal with me and began to help me and strengthen me because I was just really, I was just really very, very weak. And when you're weak, that's the devil's, wolves can smell blood. Amen. They smell, that. I'm told that a shark can smell blood and water a mile away. And I believe that, okay? Devil's, know where the weaklings are and where, know where the weaknesses are and that's they'll they'll wait until you're down and when you are they'll just climb on top of you and that's kind of how I was and I was just I was I remember I was here I was just at that altar just by myself and I was just beating myself and I was just really down on myself that I could not I could not it just seemed like I'd I'd live well for a while then I wouldn't then I'd live well for a while then I wouldn't and it just seemed like it and the Holy Ghost began to deal with me about seasons and cycles and just everything in nature. We're going through one right now. It's springtime, amen. Just a few months ago, it was cold and wouldn't have, wouldn't have leave on a tree anywhere. Now, take a look at it. It's nice, and boy, that rain comes in, makes that grass grow and all that stuff. That's all going to go away come September, October, into November. want them leaves to fall off them trees so we can see them deer in the woods, amen. Okay, and it's just going to do it right back over again. And God began to deal with me and kind of show me there's, there's cycles in, in our lives that we go in. And I was sitting out at a deer stand one time, and I was watching this river. Just, and God, you know, me and the Lord's just having to talk. God said, see the river. Well, yeah, which way is it going? I knew what he was getting at. It's going down. And he said, yeah, it's getting lower every time, isn't it? And it goes all the way down to the ocean. That river, the big river, runs into the Mississippi River, which runs into the Gulf of Mexico, and where does the water from the big river come? Gulf of Mexico, it gets right back up, picks up in the clouds, the warm air brings it over the state of Missouri, drops down as rain, ends up back in the big river again, Mississippi River again, back in the Gulf of Mexico. And, and, and Solomon talked about that in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, talking about the water cycle. Then it started just clicking with me. Well, first time I ever heard Reg Kelly preach, about is in uh, 2000, and he preached several messages that just really hit on point with me at time in my life. And he, he didn't preach a whole message on this, but I'm just going to run this through real quick because God had shown him, independent of him showing it to me, the cycles that people go in. And, you know, I use this, I use this illustration out in Kenya, and boy, they lit up. I'll never forget it. We was out in Rongo, and I was giving them this teaching on cycles. And, of course, I, you know, fall and autumn doesn't mean anything when you live on the equator, okay? They just don't see that. But I said, have you ever cut down a tree? And they all said, yeah. And I said, what are those inside that tree? And they said, well, there's those rings. And I said, what did you do with those? Well, we count them to see how old that tree is. So they do the same thing over there. And I said, every ring on that tree represented a season that that tree went in. Had a growing season, had a dormant season, had a growing season. Over there, they have a rainy season, a dry season, so it's more along with the rains than it is the cold temperatures, but it's still a season. And I said, now watch this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Therefore he shall be like a... And I stopped right there, and they all said tree, and their eyes lit up. And they knew then that what I was showing them was right out of the word of God. And they knew then that their life is just like that tree. It goes in cycles. But here, the good thing of it is, is that every, every ring on that tree, that tree got bigger, and it got stronger, and those roots got deeper. And you could always see one season where they didn't have very much rain because the rings are real thin. One season where they had a lot of rain, the rings real thick. But that tree withstood all of that. Sometimes you can see when the fire went through because there'd be a little chart around there. Have you ever seen that before? I love that stuff. But it was all about cycles and seasons, and we go in cycles. And this is on my mind because of what's going on 
with our friends down in Texas and they're being persecuted. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples come unto him. By the way, there's a prophecy right here. There's a typology here. The mountain is his kingdom. Okay? When Christ is ready to rule, his disciples are going to come up to him. Isn't that neat? I love this stuff, all right? And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying... Now, what we're going to see here is we're going to see how a lost man comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So, number one, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you're lost and you're ready to come to the Lord, the first thing you realize is that you are poor, you are bankrupt. You've been writing checks now with your flesh that your flesh can no longer cash. You've got a debt of sin that is banked up against you, and there is no way in the world for you to pay it somebody is going to have to bail you out. So, and by the way, that word blessed, you've heard me say it before, it is a salvation word. If you are blessed, you're saved. If you're cursed, you're going to hell. Amen? So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So God brings a person now to the cross because the law has convinced them. Moses told them, I can't take you in the promised land. You broke the law like I did. I can't go, you can't go. You cannot, you cannot go to heaven. So you realize that you are bankrupt before God, that God is not waiting for you to make some big offering to Him. What does our, uh, that song say? Nothing, nothing in my hand, or in my hand no price I bring, simply to the cross I cling. We don't pay anything to God. We don't have anything to give Him. So we come to Him poor in spirit. The next thing, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. When you are poor in spirit, you will mourn over your lost condition. I can, Listen, I've been in church a long time, and I've seen people come down like they're going to pretend they're going to get saved, and they'll pray the little prayer and get up like nothing ever happened. And I want to tell you something. When I see these people mourn, when I see these people weep, and they're broken, and they're sobbing at the altar, they're sobbing, they're sitting in the seat of their, the front seat of their car, they done pulled over somewhere, they're crying so hard. I knew a guy like that. He said, Mike, he said, I just had to pull over. He said, I was crying so hard. God was dealing me so bad. He said, I was lost and I knew it. And he was crying out to God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be what? Comforted is a Holy Ghost word and it's a Scripture word. We through patience and comfort of Scriptures might have hope. Blessed are they that mourn. Now, now God's going to send His Holy Spirit. Now, He's first of all convinced them that they're broke. Now, he sees the mourning condition of them, and he's going to comfort them. He's going to put his word inside of them. Number three, blessed are the meek, not the weak. It takes more strength to shut your mouth than it does to open it. Okay? Think of meekness. Think of Abraham and Lot. I'll give you a little illustration. It says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I'll give you, there's a picture of this in your Bible. Abraham and Lot, their herdsmen strove together. They were fighting over land. Now, where did Lot get his servants and his cattle? Got them from Abraham. Everything he had came from it because Lot's dad died and Abraham just sort of took him over and raised him as his own. And here's Lot and all of a sudden now Lot's been blessed and Abraham's been blessed and their herdsmen are striving together. And Abraham, or he's Abram at this time, he goes to Lot and he says, Lot, let's not fight in front of everybody. Let's, let's me and you, let's, let's kind of, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I know that everything you've got came from me, but here's what we're going to do. Lot, you pick whichever land you want. If you go this way, I'll go that way. If you go north, I'll go south. Whichever way you want, I'll give it to you. Abram was showing meekness. Lot was not. Lot could have said, you know, my Lord Abram, listen, I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for you you take the choice ground, and I'll take whatever's left over. Lot did not do that. What did Lot do? He chose the well-watered plains of Sodom. And Lot lost everything because he did not show meekness. You know what God did with Abram as soon as Lot did that? He said, Abram, look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Every place. How far is east? How far is north, south, west? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit what? Abram, every place your eyes set on, that's what I'm going to give you. This Bi listen, this Bible's right. 
Blessed are the meek. for they... So here's what happens. A man, he's bankrupt before God. He's mourning over his sinful life. And God has humbled him. He's humbled. He's brought him low. Right? He's meek. He's not fighting for all of his rights all the time. He's not a big mouth like he used to be. God's brought him down. Then he says, verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. When you're lost, you hunger and thirst for liquor, for marijuana, for dirty jokes, for dirty books, for dirty looks. You hunger and thirst after wickedness. When God puts His Spirit in you, all of a sudden you've got a new thirst. I, I had a guy one time out at Richwoods. God deli- I mean, God delivered him from drinking just like that. He said, God got a hold of me one day and he said, I went to put the bottle in my mouth and he said, it came out of my stomach harder than it went in. And he said, I tried to drink all afternoon, couldn't get none of it down. He said, that's how God, now God doesn't do that with everybody, but that's how he did it with him. And he said, all of a sudden now, I don't want to drink that nasty stuff anymore. Amen? Blessed are they. So what happens is here's the progress that God will take a man in his life. He'll bring him, he's bankrupt before God, he's mourning over his sins, God humbles him, humiliates him. Makes him realize that he ain't nothing. So then God gives him a new nature. Now he's wanting to go to church. Now he's wanting to read the Bible. Now he's wanting to listen to sermons on the internet. He's wanting to read his Bible more. He's wanting to talk to people about Jesus. He can't. When's church going to start again? Are we going to have church again? I want to come to church. He's hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And God said, I'll bless that because I'll fill you. Amen? Thy cup runneth over. Now he said, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now you watch this. A man that is forgiven will forgive. Forgive us this day our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So he's been brought low. He realizes that he couldn't pay his debt and he had to go to God and God paid it for him and he, and he humiliated him because he had to take God's welfare. You know how us men are. I ain't nobody give me no money. I'll work and earn it myself, right? That's, I mean, that's how we are. That's how God made us. Then all of a sudden we find out we can't. We're going to have to take the help, and that breaks us. Man, God broke me with that years ago, all right? So anyway, all of a sudden now, they're willing to forgive people who did them harm because they realize that God had to forgive them of doing him harm and everybody else harm. See, when you get right, You'll be merciful to people. For they shall obtain mercy. See how it's linked together? The next one, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now your motives are right. Why are you reading the Bible? Because it's good for you. Why are you wanting to come to church? To be seen? No, because I need to be here. Why are you putting money in the plate? Is it because Creflo Dollar told you that you'd get $1,000 next week in a check? No. You know what you're giving money for? It's the right thing to do. I just feel like doing this. Amen? You are pu- God has purified your motives of things you do in life. I've been in church long enough. Some of you have been in church long enough. You've seen church members who were the most self-serving people that has ever walked in shoe leather, and they call themselves Christians, and I ain't buying it. I grew up watching guys and women be self-serving and self-pleasing in every little thing they did in the church, you think, wow, boy, look at what they're doing. Uh Uh-uh, don't fall for it. They're doing that for them. They're trying to achieve or attain something. Their heart is not right. Their motives are not pure. And what happens is that God will clean your motives up. He'll clean your heart up. What's the next one? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. So now that God's purified your heart, you know what a peacemaker is? He sees a sinner and he sees an angry God and they are enmity between them. There's war between them. So you know what a peacemaker will do? A peacemaker will go to God and say, God, that man over there, that's my brother. Okay, that's my sister. That's my first cousin. That's a guy I work with. God. God, would you have mercy on my friend? Would you have mercy on my, on my brother? God, would you have mercy on my children? God, would you please forgive their sins? And then he's, he's going to God now. Then he goes to the, to the lost person. And he says, look, I can see you're miserable. I can see that, that you're just under a burden of sin that you cannot get out from underneath. And let me tell you what God did for me. Let me tell you, you know me, right? Yeah, I know you. 
You know that I, you know I did some st same stuff you did. I was right there with you the whole time. So I'm not telling you how good I am, but I'm going to tell you how good God is. God wants, to, God forgave every stupid thing that I ever did with you, and He wants to forgive you the same stupid stuff plus the other stuff I don't know about. That man is being a peacemaker. He's going to God, saying, "God, don't let him go to hell until you give him that salvation." Then he's going to that sinner, saying. Come on, God wants to forgive your sins. God wants to pay your debt. God wants to clean you up. God wants to do all these things. Blessed are the peacemakers, because what does it say? Blessed, for they should be called the children of God. Amen? And God's using you. Amen? So what happens? Follow the river. The river's running down. It's getting lower all the time, right? Runs out into the depths of the sea. It's in the bottom of the sea. By the way, that's where all our sin is. Okay, so God, this, you, know how, you know how the water gets up in the air, don't you, from the sea? Sunlight and wind. Sunlight is Christ. Wind is the Holy Spirit. Think of Christ and His Word and all that stuff. So what happens is the Word shines in your heart. God breathes into your, into your nostrils the breath of life. And all of a sudden, boy, you're raising up. Amen. I'm no longer down in the pit anymore. Amen. And then God puts it all together for you and you are just on cloud nine. And boy, you are just going, look at me up here. I didn't, think, I didn't think the world looked this pretty. Boy, look at this. Look at me. Boy, I'll tell you what, I used to be way down there, but now I'm way up here, right? Remember what the Bible calls those false prophets? Clouds without water. What good is a cloud if it ain't going to rain? So here's, here's where we get right here. We, get peace, we start leading people to Jesus. We start doing good, and we start getting real high. In, what do we call clouds? Lofty. And what does God do with us? You're so full of pride, I can't use you. I'm going to have to bring you down. So what happens to the clouds? The, there's a verse in the Bible that says, My tears ran down like rain. All of a sudden, God breaks us, and we start weeping. And let me, let me show it to you in this scenario here. Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted, not because they did something wrong, but for righteousness' sake. Terry and Michelle, if you guys are listening to me, you are being persecuted by your mother, by the, all the people in your family, for righteousness' sake. It's not, you're not bitter, you're not angry, you're not hateful, you're not vengeful, you're not a bigot, you're not a homophobe, you're not any of those words they want to call you. All you are is, I know what God says is right and I know what God says is wrong and I can't be a part of something that's wrong. And I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else, but I can't do that. Okay? See, what happens when we start taking a stand on issues, and I know this with me, I'm Mr. King James only. I'm Mr. Watchman Broadcast. I'm Mr. Pastor Mike Online. Thousands of people all over the world listening to me. Got a big bread. And, it, and what I do is I get up here. And God says, I can't use you. You're no good. You're too lofty. So I'm going to break you. I'm going to let people on the internet say mean things about you. I'm going to let your wife say mean things about you. Okay? I'm going to let people that are your friends at Bethel hurt your feelings. Okay? How does God send His doctrine down? Okay? And God's going to bring us down. So now, now God can use us because we're watering the ground and we're being blessings to people. We're filling people's wells. And we're watering people's gardens and their, and their farms and their orchards. We are just being a blessing as God breaks us and we weep and we cry. And now, we're right back where we started. Blessed are the poor in spirit. See it? Because once, it, once that rain comes down, it gets right back in the river and goes right back down to where it was. And God will do that same thing over again. So watch this. He said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And did you, I want you to look at here. Verses 10 and 11, there is a double blessing for those that are persecuted. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, I've said this before, but in this context, I'm going to say it again. Okay? They're accusing Terry and Michelle of 
being hatred, of being bigots, of being all the, they're accusing him of all these things, and I know the people. They're not like this. They did not just scream and holler and throw a fit and slap everybody with a big King James Bible and say, bless God, we're not going to do this. They did not do that. But they're being accused of things that they never did wrong. Now you listen to me. The world is going to accuse you of stuff. And they're going to say things about you and you're going to get mad because it ain't true. You just, in the same, my mama used to tell me, same pants you got mad in, you just get glad in, Buster. Amen? Because at least they're not telling the truth about you. God's not letting them have the intel on you. NSA has not released their report on you. Right? Okay? Blessed are you when they, when they say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So you ask, who am I? Look what they did to Jeremiah. They threw him in prison. Look what they did to John the Baptist. They cut his head off. Look what Jezebel said she was going to do to Elijah. She said, tomorrow night, He's either dead or I'm going to be dead. One of the two. One of us is dead. And I'm going to kill him if it's the last thing I do. Okay? And they will persecute you. Your own family members. Your people that you work with. People you thought were your friends. You'll be wounded in the house of your friends, the Bible says. But you thank God that it's persecution for righteousness sake and not for something you did wrong. That's not persecution. That's a whooping. Okay, now here's, here's, what was, here's what Brother Edge was doing this, and I was already starting to study numbers, and I knew what he was saying was true. Let's count this. In verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, that's one. Blessed are they that mourn, that's two. Blessed are the meek, that's three. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst, that's four. Blessed are the merciful, that's five. Blessed are the pure in heart, that's six. Blessed are the peacemakers, that's seven. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, that's eight, and yet there's nine in that double blessing. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. Now what is nine the number for? Fruit bearing. How would you like to bear some fruit? Okay? You're the vineyard expert. I told you, John. Okay? John is our vineyard expert. How many bushels of grapes did you pull in last December? Oh, I knew I asked the wrong question. December. December. In December? See, I thought I got it wrong. How many did you pull in in January and February, John? Huh? Huh? Zero, right? Why not? Why weren't you producing any fruit in January and February? not season you see you go back to Psalm 1 he should be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit when in his season and right here this family that Lisa and I know we love them I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story about what happened to him several years ago this is on the on the tail end of we had just lost our granddaughter. And that was in January. And that July, they called us and they said, please pray for us. Our 10-year-old grandson was playing with his buddies outside on a rope swing and we found our grandson hanging and he's dead. And that, boy, that got me. And I talked to her for a little while and I hung up the phone and God's, I'm working out how Lisa and I can get down there. It was right around our anniversary, so I said, Lisa, let's put everything aside. Let's me and you go down to Houston and be with them because we've been through this. We know what it's like. And so we went down there and just was there with them. That's all we did was just say, look, we know how this works. Okay, we know all this. And we attended the funeral and everything like that. Okay? And they're in a place right now where... God's going to use them, okay? Because he's brought them down low. He's allowed persecution to come in and bring them down low. So now they're poor in spirit. 
That was what I read today. That's why they were on my heart this morning. I had no idea. That was just out of the blue, I'm thinking of this family. And there they are right there. They're poor in spirit. And now they're mourning because they're going to lose their family. Okay? But then, now they're meek. And they hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's what this was all about anyway. Okay? And then they're going to be merciful. See, they're not angry at their family. They want to forgive their family. And their heart is pure and right, and they want to be peacemakers between even the sodomite in their family. They want to be a peacemaker between God and them. And you pray that God will use them in that way. Amen? There's always going to be that double blessing, and that number nine is the number for fruit bearing. And when a woman finally gives birth to that child, give her a few months. She's ready for another one. Just ask Mrs. Duggar, okay? She's ready for another one. Just ask my great-grandmother who had, I think, 10, 11 boys and two girls, something like that, on an old farm, Sister Diane, old sharecropping farm. Here's what I'm telling you, okay? You might be somewhere in this. Everybody in this room is somewhere in this cycle. Maybe you're, maybe you're in the flow and you're doing everybody some good. That's great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Or maybe you're down here. Rest assured, you've been down there before, haven't you? What's God going to do? He's going to cause his breath to blow and that sun to shine and heat that water up and he's going to raise you back up. He's going to bring you up there in heavenly places and then you're going to get proud because we always do. We always think that once we get back up there, I think it'll be like this forever now. I think I'm good. And then we get full of pride, and God says, I can't use you like this. You're blocking the sun. <laughs> That's all you're good for is blocking the sun. Okay? I'm going to put you back down. You're going to cry, and you're going to moan, but I'm going to use you to be a blessing to some people that need a blessing. Too many lost people don't see Christians weep enough and broken enough. They see the arrogant ones on the TV screen that think they have a right to everything. And when you are meek, you realize that maybe you do have a right. You're going to let God settle that one because that's what Abram did. Somebody say amen. All right, now let's take our Bibles. No, I won't do that to you. Boy, I'd like to, though. I've got too much to do, though. I gotta, I, I, since I decided today, this is me, what I was going to be speaking on in Lebanon, now I've got to put all stuff together because I, I ain't got it ready yet. So y'all pray for me, all right? I may have Lisa drive and me work on the way down there tomorrow. You don't have to because I can tell you right now it ain't going to happen, all right? Anyway, let's stand to our feet.